Battle passes are known for their temporary content. If you don't complete them on time, you never get another chance at the content in it. That is, until a better idea comes along. Let's talk about some. Hey there, this is Tobiased, here for all your bias needs. Let's talk about battle passes. If you're watching this, you've probably seen or purchased a few battle passes yourself, and there's a 90% chance you're not subscribed. You've seen them in Fortnite, Apex Legends, Valorant, PUBG, literally every new Call of Duty since Black Ops 4 and older games are starting to incorporate them too, like Rocket League and Rainbow Six Siege. They're even in games you wouldn't expect, like Genshin Impact and Marvel's Avengers. What? Point is, it's not uncommon to see a battle pass in your game of choice. The system of gradual dopamine doses feeds off your need to finish what you already started and it pulls you in for its limited, screw you for not earning it on time content. If you look at it objectively, 80 to 90% of a battle pass's content is just padding onto what you're actually looking forward to it. When you really think about it, it's a nice trick to sell you on crap you'd never actually pay for. It's a comfortable and easy way to get your paying audience to pay a fixed amount every season. They just overlook how much you have to play to get through it. Wow, now that's a trap if I've ever seen one. Despite their frequent appearance in games, battle passes are most definitely overrated like Sword Art Online overrated, and just like the show, keeps coming back. Whatever makes money, I guess. Battle passes are fun in the beginning, with some even having faster progression at the start of them to give you your initial satisfaction. That's how they get you. I've run through my fair share of battle passes, and I don't always finish them on time because of how much I'm expected to play, and it makes me deviate from actually having the fun that I intend on having. I can confidently say I haven't finished 50% of all the battle passes I bought. Wow, imagine finishing your battle pass, I know. But even if you play a few times a week, you'll still never finish, so you can't blame yourself for not making it. Once you're past the initial thrill of getting into the pass, there, that's where the fun kinda stops being the main priority. It's as simple as that. Your favorite game becomes a genuine chore after paying for the chance to enslave your soul to the game and you're just going to go through the cycle of trying to justify your purchase and all that shenanigans and then you end up in a cycle of depression and all that well you might as well do it to make your money worth it right personally i'm too lazy to play anything consistently anymore still does genshin impact dailies so the idea of buying battle passes for every game i play every two to three months can eat my jorts you can't just tell a battle pass where to go without providing some constructive criticism in return, right? So here's a few ideas to improve them. Idea number one, forever battle passes. Okay, this one's not my idea, but I've made some concepts to support it. An always available battle pass system is something that Halo devs are trying out right now with Halo Infinite before its release. In an interview released by the devs, 343 Industries, they say they're taking a different approach. I know you've touched on it in our multiplayer overview video, but can you elaborate a little more on why our battle pass is going to be different, and dare I say better, than most that are out there right now? The company's live design director, Ryan Paradis, says the following. First and foremost, we're working hard to ensure that the battle pass isn't a grind for players. We want it to be a supplemental reward stream for the time you were already putting into the game. I, for one, can't stand it when I'm playing a game just to complete the battle pass. It feels like a chore to me. In this statement, you can infer that the chore factor of these passes have been discussed in their development, and they're definitely considering the consumer experience for this. Ryan continues to reveal their solution to this by announcing, We're going player first with our battle passes. All battle passes will be permanent. This means that the Season 1 battle pass will be around forever. You can always go back, select that as your active battle pass, and continue to earn progress with it. If you decided to take a season off because you're wanking or something, or you're dropping out of school, or you simply didn't have time to play, that's fine. You can always go back and purchase any prior battle pass as well. Additionally, our passes will always include various free rewards in addition to the premium track. So it sounds like your typical battle pass, but you know, more convenient to the player. So their battle passes will always be available to complete. We will work through one pass at a time, alternating between them at your leisure. This is assuming each of them are still paid, and you've paid to access them when you're switching between them. Point is, you can pause on one, and return to it at a later point, which is pretty cool. Coincidentally, 343 Industries is taking this player first motive to heart with the entirety of Halo Infinite. If you put your trust in us and purchase something from us, it's yours. 
no strings attached. Also, Xbox themselves have been slaying with the affordable and actually worth it Game Pass, so maybe they know what they're doing. Idea number two, retro remix battle passes. Like a SoundCloud artist's interesting new take on a popular existing track, this idea brings back old battle passes with a twist. Alongside a current season battle pass, the introduction of a cheaper secondary battle pass that features a collection of items from several other battle passes from the past. This allows players another shot at old content while still giving a long time players something new to work towards. This idea can be done in several ways. One, a singular pass with an occasional random chance at rolling for a classic item from a previous battle pass, a full-on curated secondary pass based on past items, which is the idea I was just talking about. So this is where unboxing items you already own can either become an in-game currency or a roll for a random classic item instead. A battle pass exclusive currency that can be redeemed for old battle pass content of your choice. Idea number three, the gacha pass. What? Sometimes entirely fixed content blows, and that's why this idea comes to mind. A nearly 100% randomized roll style pass that favors a selection of curated items, but isn't exclusive to them. This gives incentive to players who are interested in a certain group of items based on the given battle pass. Additionally, a secondary favored list that changes seasonally could also be included to spice up old battle passes that you weren't interested in before. This style keeps things fresh while increasing the scale of the surprise factor if that's something you're you're into. Looking at you, unboxing YouTubers. Idea number four, the battle path. After going through one third or even a half of a battle pass, or maybe one fifth or whatever number you want to roll with here, you'll be given the option to railroad into one of a set few paths featuring different content from each other. This can feature entirely fixed paths of gacha style rolls with favored item rolls. This gives more flexibility to the player if they're aiming for certain items or trying to avoid some entirely. This one sounds a bit much for full on battle passes, but you could definitely work in a digestible 20% capacity, which perhaps randomized path layouts to choose from after you complete your current path. Idea number five, the contract style battle pass. Ever wanted another guaranteed chance to get an item you missed out on? Based on Valorant's character contract system, this system acts as a shorter 10 item pass available at a lesser or no cost. However, it takes almost as long as the standard pass to complete maybe 60 to 70% as long. This gives player a permanent option to work towards old content at any time and is effective alongside the standard fixed content passes. Idea number six, the you shall not battle pass. What if we got rid of battle passes entirely and simply created a whole trading market for your game's items? Set it up so every item sold gets X company taxed and all you gotta do is release a crate with some rare one to 100 chance at a visual effect so people will always buy them for the chance of becoming dripping rich. All you gotta do is take community submissions, hit add to game, and slap a random hex code color on the case and key, leave for three months, and then do it again. Subscribe to Topiest Pass? You heard me. To truly solve battle passes, subscribe right now. Or just comment your idea below. That's cool too. At the end of the day, even giving just a like probably staves me off from existential dread. Please, I, I, I need this. If you find me super interesting, follow me on Twitch to question my sanity live. I'll be playing Genshin Impact or some or an actual game at 8pm EST during the week. My Twitter exists and so does my community Discord. Feel free to reach out in a sensible manner please, for the love of god. Anyways, if you're gonna get farmed, don't let it be by something you paid for. Genshin Impact suddenly wants to talk to me. This has been your boy Tobias, and I will catch you guys later.